In Star Wars, midi-chlorians were the closest thing we had to power levels. Anakin, as a nine-year-old, was over 20,000, more than Master Yoda himself. The prequels were the first time we entered a measurable state of the Force. Now, while midi-chlorians aren't to be mistaken for one's full power on power levels, they are an abstraction of one's potential should they train in the Force. Now, back in the 80s, when The Empire Strikes Back was being written, George Lucas actually had devised a power ranking system out of 10 for Obi-Wan, Luke, Vader, and the Emperor. Here's the transcript from the making of The Empire Strikes Back, and then we can discuss a lot of things. Earlier, Luke talks to Ben when he brings him up as a ghost. We portend what is going to happen. Ben says, Vader has more power than you can imagine. When he and I met, we fought on such a level that there didn't appear to be much of a battle. It appeared to be a sword fight, but it was a battle of our wills that was really going on in the beyond. I'd like to make it into a battle, which he did in the Alan Dean Foster book, which is what I wanted to do in the first one with Ben and Vader, with lightning or electrical bolts and throwing things around the room. An exorcist kind of battle where you can bring all kinds of supernatural powers to bear. We will have Ben say, Vader couldn't use his supernatural powers against me because I was too strong. He had to rely on brute force, which wasn't of any value because I was too advanced for that. So everything he did to me was useless. Maybe we should set up some kind of levels of achievement. Ben can say that Luke is now a level 2 and Vader is a 4. I was a 6 and the Emperor is a 6. And he's on his way to becoming a 10, which will be a force so powerful in the universe that nothing can stop him. You must stop the Emperor before he achieves the level 10. Luke has to destroy the Emperor. It does give us a time frame for the future. Not only do they have to restore the Republic, but they also have to worry about the Emperor. We're really beginning to set up that situation. So as we can see here, Luke Skywalker is a level 2. Obi-Wan with all of his training from Qui-Gon, Yoda, and more is only a 6. This means that during the prequels, he was probably a 4, considering the last 20 years he didn't learn all that much more when it came to his training. Unless, of course, George completely abolished this level system, in his mind that is, and just went straight to the midichlorians, because we never got a power ranking level system like Dragon Ball Z Scouters had in Star Wars, except for this little excerpt from the making of The Empire Strikes Back. The interesting thing about Obi-Wan is that he had the poorest connection to the Force of all the Jedi. He was an embarrassment, both in canon and legends. In fact, in canon, Qui-Gon in the novel Master and Apprentice talks about how Obi-Wan is so far behind him compared to where he was at that age. He basically calls Obi-Wan useless. So for Obi-Wan to be as powerful as the Emperor is now really is a testament to how hard he practiced and trained. As Master Windu told him, he is the master of Sor Su, and he didn't get here because he's really all that talented. He just worked really hard. Now in Anakin's case, he's talented and he worked not as hard as Obi-Wan, but he still worked hard to develop his skills and became just as, if not more powerful than Obi-Wan in the end. And yes, I know he lost, but it was because of his own arrogance and lack of judgment. Now, of course, these power levels shouldn't be as theorized and analyzed as I'm doing now, as they are outdated and clearly something George established for the originals and possibly abolished going beyond that to the prequels. But it is super interesting to know, because this is the very first time that we actually hear it from the man himself, published in the book. Does this mean that Yoda in the prequels was a level 6 and Obi-Wan was a level 4? Meaning Anakin was also a level 4 while being so much younger, putting in the effect of his many thousands of more midichlorians compared to the rest. This would have given Anakin more of a potential to reach a higher level faster than others, like giving Anakin a higher IQ, which wouldn't necessarily mean he's smarter than his masters, unless he studied, in which case he did. He would then destroy all of them easily. So his propensity to be great was much higher than any other Jedi, but it really just depended on him actually training or not. That's like saying someone who has really good genetics who doesn't really ever go to the gym to lift a weight and just sits around and eats potato chips all day is going to have a better body or physique than someone who doesn't have great genetics but does everything to the T, works out, eats right, gets good sleep, no stress, at least as much as he can, and really sees his physique develop. Anakin is like the guy with great genetics who sort of works out, works out pretty hard, and he's just really good at it and has great genes. 
Anyways, we could assume at the rate at which Anakin developed his abilities were maybe two to three times as fast as others who were maybe more average or slightly above average even. Let's move on to Vader. Vader was a four, as George said. This, I think, is indicative of his lowered power state that George always talked about after losing to Obi-Wan in episode three. Back when the originals were a thing and you know prequels weren't at all in existence, George said that once he lost to Obi-Wan, he'd never reach his full power and be only 80% as powerful as the Emperor, who was a level six, about to become a level 10. If Vader was still in Anakin's body and he didn't lose to Obi-Wan and he didn't cut himself off from the force as much as he did by losing, then I really think he would have been a 10 already by the point of the originals here. So the Emperor, a level 10. Luke is a level 2 and at this point, I mean Luke was pretty powerful but he's really just a level 2. This means in A New Hope he was like a level 0.5 or a one at most. And after his training with Yoda, he became a level two, even though he cut it short. So this massive jump for the Emperor from six to 10, from episode four to six, really shows that there's something that goes on that the Emperor will eventually learn some certain crazy power and be able to achieve this high immortal power level. What he could learn is never actually discussed, but I could rule out the ability to learn lightning, as originally George wanted Luke to use lightning against Vader, as well as Vader to use lightning against Obi-Wan in their fight, as we just heard. So I think maybe this power could be something else that Sidious learns, maybe something to do with Sith alchemy or magic, or perhaps some other power, some Sith sect, or something that he learns about maybe from a holocron that they were thinking of throwing in there or adding to the storyline. I think the idea of the Emperor getting ready to jump to an immortal power level of 10 and the heroes had to beat the clock so he didn't get there would have been a bit too video gamey for me. I like the idea, but I also like the idea more that Sidious always harnessed the power of a level 10, let's say, and it wasn't his power that needed to be matched or to be stopped, but the power of love that Vader showed for his son, Luke which beat Sidious once and for all. To show that you can change your ways no matter how evil you have become and how horrible the things you have done, like Vader did, it's never too late to change. And in the end, the power of love triumphs over all evil, no matter the power that you're going up against, which in this case, it did. He beat Sidious. Now many will argue, why did Sidious allow Vader to kill himself so easily? I'm gonna make a video about this. I don't think I've made one in the past, but it's a very simple explanation. And I'll just say it to the you here for those who have actually made it to the end of this video. And if you have, let me know in the comments right now. So essentially, Sidious and the way the dark side works is that he was so entranced with the dark side, in the dark side, he was so deep in it as he was killing Luke, each lightning bolt transcended him further and further into the dark ether we could, we could say of the Force. And once Vader betrayed him, he didn't see it coming because he was so blindsided by his own hatred to kill Luke, especially after he fully succumbs to the dark side and tells Luke, no, young Skywalker, you will die. Something like that. And once he said that, he was fully into it. And we can see it with the sparks. We can see it with the lightning. We can see it with his face in general. It's no longer smiling. It's fully contorted and he's ready to kill. This is the unlimited power that he's now unleashing. So this moment, he was blindsided like a horse in a race with his eyes covered in the sides and all he can see is the target in front of him. Vader blindsides him and he can't feel that. He can't see that because of what I just explained. Vader puts him atop his head and Sidious now knows that he's being betrayed by Vader and he's so unbelievably outraged that he just can't do anything else but just shoot more lightning which is just fueling more of his rage. The lightning is sparking and hitting everywhere all over, over the walls and the floor, and of course back onto himself and Vader. So it's kind of like they're stuck in this loop of hatred and being frozen in his own lightning. And of course, Vader moves and finally throws him into the shaft and he dies. And it's this reason that he actually lost to Vader. Otherwise, of course, he would have you know, just done something simple like frozen Vader in place or whatever, because as George said, he was 20% more powerful than Vader was, right? Vader was only 80% as powerful as the Emperor. And had he not lost to Obi-Wan in episode three, he would have been far more powerful than the Emperor. So we can see that really 
The only thing holding Vader back was himself the entire time. Had he not lost to Obi-Wan and been arrogant enough to think that his new powers could defeat Kenobi, even with the disadvantage of the high ground, then he would have survived and so would have Padme, most likely. He would have destroyed the Emperor and made things the way he wanted them to be. And maybe he would have turned back to the light at some point. But probably not. Anyways, in the end, Love saved his son and saved the galaxy. Vader saved Luke in a sacrificial last effort and fulfilled the Jedi prophecy of bringing balance to the Force. This also makes me wonder if Luke in Episode 6 was then a level perhaps 4 or 5. I would say a little over Obi-Wan from A New Hope. I would say he's a level 5 by the time of Return of the Jedi. Maybe not as powerful as the Emperor in the Force, but well on his way, for sure. He would have been somewhat like what Anakin could have achieved had he not lost. George Lucas has also said that Starkiller was a direct representation of Luke Skywalker's powers had he actually been trained by Vader. So that right there, to me, I feel like Starkiller is like a 10, so Luke was on his way to becoming a 10 in Legends. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about these Star Wars power levels that were, were of course abolished later on, but it's really interesting to see this, I guess, canon explanation of it from George Lucas's mind back when he was creating the originals. Let me know what you think the other power levels are of different Star Wars characters in your mind according to this power scale of Luke being a 2 in The Empire Strikes Back after Yoda trained him. Thanks for watching this video. Leave a like on it if you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you always.